Hello, hello. Hello. What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm fine. Shout out to to Wally for that. I'm yeah, really shout, appreciate it. Shout out to Wally who just bought a coaching lesson. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my man. All right, dude. Well, <laughs> welcome. Um, what race would you like to go over today? What league are you currently in? And uh, what's kind of like your average play style you like to go for? So I'm actually a, a low platinum a league player. Uh, first of all, like sorry for the the weird accent. I'm English oh, is not my actually like first language. You're all good, dude. And uh, I'm uh, I, I actually play Protoss, but this replay is uh, Zerg. I was actually playing random. I've been having a, lots of fun playing random. Sure. And uh, uh, but my Zerg play style is really like the the worst of three and i sure can't really uh, measure the the droning overlording army count so uh, i usually like either die or of over droning or like get stuck with a, a worst economy ever for no reason okay so I, I think i think i'm 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 really struggling to find a balance uh in this replay i I thought I have done it correctly, but I got like really weird, uh, like fighting scenarios, and I lost like all my army like four times, and then just bleeding out. Okay, so are you are you normally uh, when you play StarCraft? Do you normally play on the European server? Just out of curiosity. Uh, no, it's NA. Okay. Uh, all right. Perfect. So here's what we can do. Just join, um, type, when, you, when you're when you online on Battle.net, just type slash join space vibe or vibu, either one, V-I-B-E or V-I-B-U. And then I should be able to see you on either one of those channels. Uh, oh, really? Uh, join? Uh, sorry, yeah. I didn't catch that. So, you, like, I'll, I'll type it in Discord, too. Vibe or vibu, just like this. You would type oh, it. Oh, oh, I think I joined. Okay. Um... I, I swear I hate chat channels in this game. I can't even like, even though I'm in it, I can't even see it. Uh, can, can you see me typing in one of them right now? In Vibu? Yep. Okay, so click my name, like right click my name and just invite me to party. Join. There we go. Uh, I'm sorry, I just, I just joined the, the good. wrong one. I see you. I got you. You're, uh, Thank you so yeah. much. I was completely lost. Yeah, don't worry. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's the Blizzard interface, dude. It's great. <laughs> All right, so now I made you leader, so go ahead and hit replays. And then go to the replay that you want to watch, like the one you sent me, basically. Just go here yeah. and then do watch with others and uh, open it up that way instead. And that's really weird. The one I selected, it, it says it cannot be watched with others. What does that even mean? It means it's a previous patch then. Oh, uh, that's a shame. If, if we can, st we can still watch it. We just won't will not be able to watch it together. You actually would have to okay. look look at the stream then to do this one. No, no problem with that. I actually sent you. Okay. In right. the Discord, I think. Sure, I can I can watch it then. I'll, I'll end up solo watching it instead. No, no, no worries. Though I can look at the stream. Okay. So, let's do this. Uh, so you are the you ended up being Zerg versus Terran, uh, versus yep. Bart versus the uh, guy named Barcode. <laughs> All right, so you know what matchup it is, so we're not going to worry too much about that. And this, yeah, this is a uh, plat. Your Zerg is plat, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I think maybe. Okay, sure. We'll just say plat <laughs> for the sake okay. of, of simplicity. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so we got a we got a plat Zerg here, um, ZBT. We'll see kind of like how you like to open, uh, how your build goes. If you could tell me really quickly, just like. Maybe how you like your opener to be. Are you the kind of guy who likes to go speed league expands? Are you the kind of guy who likes to go roaches? So, um, I, I've only played Zerg in uh, by selecting random. So I'm, I don't have the matchup sorted out like I have with Protoss, for an example. Okay. I like to open uh, 17 hatch, and then gas pool. I think that's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thought. And then I just like I I tend to check uh, for like all ins or uh, like if the guy doesn't expand, so I, I try to be more cautious. Sure. Otherwise, so I just do third. Okay. And, so you you uh, sound like you're pretty standard then. You just you just play it pretty standard style, which is totally fine. I prefer you do that. 
Um, I'll say the the only thing I've seen so far in this game that I think could be better is uh, there's there's two things. They're neither one of them. Like they're both a little important. They're not gonna make or break the game for you altogether, but they will help you a little bit. The first thing <clears throat> I tell a lot of people this, but if you can help it. Try to spread your drones out, at the very least, on two drones per close patch when you're doing nothing right now. Because right now you have, uh, you have one, or you have, uh, you know, you'll, every base has four close patches and four far patches. So... Yeah, I, I get this concept. Y yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, just... Okay, cool. I, I didn't do that. Yeah, so that's number one. And number two is, is you were, I think you might have been typing, it was, which is why this was delayed, but your larva was actually very close to capping like two different times because you waited to spend your money like uh two times on you know just like a drone would like it's like you had like 115 minerals or something and then you finally made a drone so got it make sure just make sure as well you're spamming sd 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 as fast as you can because it's definitely gonna make a humongous difference for you especially when you're not fully saturated yet uh all right so you are also scouting for proxies which is cool it's fine. Um, I would say, just to make your life easier, there is no reaction you would be able to do even if you saw a proxy. And I, I guess the only reaction you could do if you saw it really early is like pull a drone and kill the SAV building the proxy. But if you just leave, like, your, or go ahead, what's uh, up? Yeah, I mean, like uh, after the hatchery was already placed, there was really no point on, on really no reaction, like. Yeah, no. If if you're, yeah, if you commit to hatchery first, like you you're kind of stuck defending your hatchery regardless of if, if you are or are not getting proxied. The only thing that you could do would be kill the SV building it if you saw it like right away. Uh, but one way you could deal with a proxy to make your life easy is put your overlord like right here. Okay, like you, I'm, I'm assuming you're looking at the stream, so there'll be a, maybe a little bit of delay. But if you put oh, your overlord, yeah, it's okay. if you put your overlord like right in front of your natural, uh, what could happen for you is you could. Uh, you know, you'll see a bunker going down if it is a proxy, and you'll also see SCVs coming to at a very awkward time, it, like into your base, uh, like to to get ready to build that shit. So, just paying attention to that automatically tells you if you are or are not getting proxied, and that will always happen before your pool is done if you go 17, 18, 17. So, okay. as a response to that, if you see, oh shit, yeah, we're getting proxy ra like bunkered right now. He's actually. He is legit proxying me with a with a bunker all in. You could then just start making mass links and pull drones off your mineral line to go deny the bunker and like go pressure initially what's there. And you okay. can still yeah that's how you can react to it still perfectly. And this way you wouldn't have to you like to sacrifice a drone. Players that you see do this kind of shit where they look for proxies instead of scouting across the map are usually pro gamers who know how their opponent plays. Like they just oh. know the ins and outs of how their opponent kind of sets shit up. It's not great to do in just an average ladder game because it's all it's going to do is put you behind almost all the time. Okay, uh, can you check the time on the replay? Like, uh, is the replay like twenty minutes long or something like that? It's twenty-one minutes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> all right, and then uh, yeah. So I, I I would say like that scouting with your first overlord across the map to his base, second overlord in front of your natural until your natural is just about done would be perfect. Um, like the fact that you see an SCV in your base right now scouting like this, this tells you that most like it, like the timing of this SCV getting to your base, like around 130 to 140, that tells me that this SCV is most likely his barracks SCV that he then sent to your base after he built the barracks. So if I had to assume anything, before even seeing his base, I would assume that there is a barracks done and there's a Reaper probably almost already done out of, out of it as well because this is a very standard Reaper style opener. Oh, it, I see. And the way you can confirm this is like just, beca just because of the timing of him being in your base. It's not way too early. It's not really awkwardly late. Uh, and then your overlord, what you should be expecting to see if he's playing really standard is your overlord should see a natural. Which is, it looks, if you look at the game, it looks like that's what he's about to do. So, again, this just reinforces the fact that your drone right here has missed early on in the game. Which has also, if you look at your mineral line, you're still not fully saturated on it. That could have been fully saturated, but you've missed out on... Uh, it, one drone is equivalent to 6.25% of your economy per that for that base. Uh, but that has been missing now for the last like probably 45 seconds to a minute for you because you've been scouting for so long with this drone. 
So that's at, at, at the stages of the game, it really makes a lot, a lot of the the what? Sorry. Yeah, at this stage of the game, like the six percent actually makes a lot of. It does. Yeah, it's huge. It's definitely huge. Uh, Later on, you'll see me banking like a, a unbelievably high account of money, but. It's, yeah, right I mean, it happens. <laughs> a way to fix that later on is like macro hatches and shit, but early on in the game, your minerals make a massive difference because this determines the fact of like how fast your third base could be, how fast can you make queens with that, how fast can you get your link speed upgrade, all those things. Is it an issue to uh, let the drone follow the SEV? Yes, I would say, I would say, yeah. I would say this drone should be, this drone should be mining the whole time right now. It shouldn't act, like, because this drone is the same drone that you sent out earlier on, and I think this drone left your base at like 45 seconds to like 50 seconds in the game or something like that. It, it, left, it left really early and it hasn't been mining for like two minutes now. And if you also think about this, we're not going to give you a percentage here. I'm going to give you a flat number. One drone mines about one mineral per second, okay? Uh, if it's properly saturated. So if this drone was properly saturated on a mineral line the whole time of like two minutes, that's 120 minerals that you've now missed out on. And if you think about 120 minerals, what that could do for you—that's a lot of fuck, that's a lot of things. Like, that's like a couple of zerglings. That's easily an overlord. That's like you know, if you add it on to what you have right now, you could easily take your third base and also build another drone. Like, there's a shitload of stuff that you could afford with that extra money that you have kind of missed out on with this one drone just not being there for so long. Got it. Uh, but yeah, I would I would say definitely rely on overlord scouting more so than drone scouting for now. Uh, you could you could definitely get away with it if you just look at how the build develops and the, like the fact that your overlord has now confirmed. Okay, yeah, there's a uh, there's a natural here. Like you know you're fine. You you know that there's nothing to be afraid of because it's if it's a if it's a fast expand build for Terran, uh, you know that not only does he have like there's two ways to look at this. Uh, they both they're both something you should think about. But the bigger one is okay. He invested into a natural, so there's no all in. Like he. He's setting up for a little bit later in the game now. He's he's okay. not trying to just one base all in me. Yeah, yeah, this, that's this, clear. Yeah, this, the second thing you should look at is the fact that it's not done yet. A command center build time and a hatchery build time are the same. But, like, obviously a hatchery is a little bit cheaper. But the thing is, that fact that your hatchery has been done for a little while now, and the fact that his command center still is not done, it means, like, what's the difference there? It means that if you were to do the same build he did with Zerg, it would be... Uh, Overlord, spawning pool, and then a hatchery because he went barracks before command center. So that makes sense because if you would have went pool first, your hatchery would also be delayed right now. It would not be done yet. Or it would be finishing like just now basically because it's a little cheaper like I said before. But uh, yeah, like you, this tells you for sure, okay, yeah, this guy totally went for a barracks first. So you should already know what he's going for. Your drone, even before your drone got into his base. But the fact that your drone did get into his base and you saw a reactor finishing around the same time as a factory, now you also know he's going to go for Hellions. That is also what that means. If you see a reactor that is on par with the time of a factory, that always means Hellions. Uh, because a, Hellion, or a, a factory and a reactor have very similar build times. A reactor is 36 seconds and a factory is 43 seconds. So it's, it's very minor differences there. But if you saw this reactor that was like, let's say the reactor was what it is like now where it's almost done and the factory was only at like 20%. It's like barely started. You would know, okay, yeah, this guy's got probably like maybe even a second barracks in his base somewhere because that factory is super delayed. So where's the trade-off? Like he's going to go bio, but essentially. He's going to do some type of a bio opener as opposed to if the factory reactor are close together, it's a Hellion opener. Uh, these things all are, so you go, you, you, tell me, what are you thinking? Uh, I I was uh, I saw like a video of you coaching a diamond guy. I think it's was, yeah. uh, uploaded today, and it it told about uh, moving the overlord to the ramp. Is that a a problem? It's, yeah, no, it's it's important. You should do that. Uh, I I would say this game, this specifically, you don't have to do that because you use your drone to do it instead. So you already got the information that you need. But I would rec if you if if you're playing standard and you're not drone scouting, you should definitely scout the ramp. To figure can out you, what it is. Can you change to my vision? I, I did. I actually see it. I mean, you. I mean, right now you're not looking at it, but your drone was in there a little while ago. Oh, I see. But like your drone was in there probably. Oh, like, okay, okay. Yeah, like right, right around. It. Let's see. Yeah. Speed it up to that point. I'll see if you look at it. Okay, so your drone just ran right by it right now. And yeah, it's I in didn't his base. See it, actually. 
Our drones are under attack. Even if you don't see, okay, you, you looked at your drone and your drone died, and that was it. So we're back to where we just were. So you you physically didn't look at this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you definitely should always. Uh, and I, I, this was desperation, trying to put a hatchery down, couldn't, sure. and then. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> okay, I have another question for you. This is uh, this is actually something that I I never I didn't even think about because I've just done this forever. But a lot of people don't do this. Go really quickly if you're on StarCraft. Go to your options if you would for just a sec, and then go to gameplay, and then tell me what it says where at the top right of that where it says show unit life bars. What do you have that on? Uh, show unit life bar always. Okay, it's okay, perfect. So it should be on always because if it is on always, you'll see buildings like this when you scout them, which will give you an HP gauge on the building while it's building because you haven't damaged it or anything like that yet. So if you see the HP gauge over the building, you can easily tell with like really quick to be like, okay, yeah, it's timed together because the, the pacing of the bar is about the same or if it's really different. So you can tell if it's telling your bio. Okay. Smile. <laughs> Thank you, Sudoku, for the tent, man. Much love. Okay. Anyways, so going back to your build here. Uh, another thing is when you get... Uh, so are, are you also... I, I guess I can ask this first before I tell you what you're doing is wrong. Are you the kind of guy that likes to go for overlord speed? Well, I <laughs> I don't think like actively about it. Uh, I, I mean, sometimes I prefer getting like four queens up before thinking about it. Sure. But uh, let's say not consistently is the answer to that question. Because if you don't go overlord speed, this two drones on gas is screwing you over pretty hard again. Because it's, okay. it's the same thing of like I was talking about earlier with that first drone. It's just another thing. This is now like an addition to your drones are not being utilized properly because you're you're maximizing something else more more or less also like there's a there's a lot of droning being missed here i would say uh another thing too is your queen your first queen at the at the main base it threw a tumor down first so you actually open this game up with double tumors uh that's another thing that i would say is not great so okay. the way to fix that would be once you get up once you get up to or very very either very close to or or at 100 gas so if you're anywhere between 70 to 100 gas, you can rip two drones off gas because your goal right now is to take a third base. It's not to go for a speed league all in or some shit like that. So sure. it's just defensive speed is all it is. So if you delay it just by a few seconds, that's totally fine. Especially once you know he's taken a natural, it's okay to delay it because you know you're not being all in. The only time you would want to not delay it is if there was no natural here and then you saw, oh shit, it's like three racks and he's going mass reapers. Then you would ha you would need to get that speed out ASAP, or else you're gonna die. Uh, but yeah, this guy's playing super standard. He's playing very very economical himself. So delaying your speed a little bit and prioritizing like the third a little bit faster would be totally fine. Uh, and yeah, and then also the other thing too with the eject and the tumor, I I do like that you put a tumor down at your natural first because that allows you to have queen defensive coverage over your natural and your third, which is easier to it makes it easy to zone hellions out, which is super good. But I don't like that you did it in your main as well because you don't. It's not necessary right now. You don't need it. It's not actually going to play a part in the game as early yeah, as you're putting I, it down. And I need the larva. Exactly, and you're actually just slowing your larva down again. So your drone count. If we look at the drone count to the SCV count, it should actually be somewhat similar now. Like you're not going to actually gain a lead like you're supposed to as Zerg. Your worker count's going to be similar to his for a while. It's yeah. It's uh. It's gonna just make you have a harder time breaking off from the Terran with uh, your macro. And then uh, I, also I really like, uh, in general, always start a third queen after your second queen is out. Like as soon as you can afford it, do it right away. And you can definitely afford oh. it right now. Yeah, I I could. Uh, uh, the fourth. Does it have any timings or? Uh, Are you talking about the fourth so queen or the fourth base? Uh, the fourth queen. Uh, uh, sometimes I see myself like, uh, without thinking, I've got like six queens and I have no idea what to do with sure. them. Sure. I would say if you play the game standard and you get the third down when you're supposed to get the third down, because your third could have been thrown down this game too. It would not have been blocked by the Reaper if your third was thrown down at an appropriate time. Let's go, let's go back to that first. Let's talk about that first and then it might make more sense. So like right now, okay? Here's a perfect example. You have major queens, your first two queens, right? You've spent all your larva as well. This is great. I, I this Up to this point, this is great. You don't have enough money to expand right now. You will in a second. But you would have easily had enough money to expand 
if you did not start zergling speed and you also didn't leave an extra drone on gas to go all the way up to 52. That would have okay, given you... I got that, it. Yeah, so that you could have actually just... You could have totally thrown your, thrown your third down third down by now. The ideal time to throw your third down against Terran is like usually between 28 to 30 supply. So this is a bit late already. Uh, but you could have taken it now and then if you would have taken it now all your costs would have been totally fine you would have you wouldn't have had this problem of no third but i what i like to do is i actually like to go for double queen out of your main and natural because that's when your pool's done because your pool and your natural finish at the same time and then you make queen number three after queen number two and your natural only so you're only making a third queen by itself at your natural and then by the time your third queen's out, you can make a fourth queen after ag again at your natural. So you pace your queens like one at a time out of your natural. And then you can make an additional one at your third base when that's done. Because around the time when your third is finished, if you're if you're able to get away with a lot of drones, if your opponent's not doing something super all in. Vibe. One second, I'm someone just donated and, and the bot's gonna I know talk. you've been searching the internet for a cure for your micro penis for a long time. <laughs> but this latest solution is just dangerous. For your health, I canceled your Amazon order containing the ratchet straps. Sorry. Yo, uh, robot lady. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that micro penis <laughs> is a real fucking downer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, I appreciate the dono. Holy fuck, 100 bucks. Thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> Set up. <laughs> yeah, much love, okay? I'll, uh, I'll figure something out. I don't know. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, like, if you if your third, your third hatchery, you can start making queens out of that, too, when it's done. And the ideal point to go to is maybe like seven queens if you're going to play super standard. And the reason why your <laughs> your third hatch is going to make a queen too is because you still do want another one, but you don't want to congest your main base with a queen in production because at this point you're going to go, be going for a layer in general. That's usually when you're going to be taking a layer too. Okay, like three minutes. Uh, oh, uh, after the four queens, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you'll be taking it like probably more around like four minutes, roughly. Okay. I resisted the, the the urge to send like Gecko, thank you, man. some new place sure in which I got like really nice fungals or like a really cool abduct on the medivac. That was a really nice to show off. But this was a really horrible game for me. I, sure. I, I don't want to make like uh, any excuses, but I usually take that that two drones out of gas really consistently, and I I didn't notice it was it's like, all good feeling there. No, I so, I. So it's really, I told I, I believe you. Like I don't think your standard is probably leaving two drones in gas as well. Like, it, like I know that some people fuck shit up in games where they're like, "Whoops, forgot to do it this time." Uh, I just oh I'll call it if I see it just to make sure that it just sure, sure, in case. Sure, sure. Yeah, just, just make sure you know for sure. But thank you so much. No worries, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, carry. Thank you very much for the tier three, my man. Um, but yeah, so th like this static D, for instance, I. Seeing what you see right now, there's no reason to make the static D as you have, because you do know, like you've known for, you should have known for a while that it's a Hellion opener. I, I, I was, I was like freaking out about the Hellions. I usually can't like hold them with queens and lings. I usually mess things up, and I, I really panicked. So here's the way to, here's a way to make your life a lot easier when you fight against Hellions. Okay. From now on, just do it like this. If you're gonna play the style you're playing right now, when your speed is almost done you can start another round of like 10 links or 12 links so you and if you make four early on for like the reaper and then you make like 10 or 12 more after your speed is almost done you'll be sitting at like 14 or 16 links which is totally fine this is roughly also going to be around the time when your natural is pretty much fully saturated on the mineral line as when you're going to make the links now okay uh is there a uh like reasonable proportion from links to heliums i think they he sends like eight or six it's okay. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, for now, you're just going to stop around 14 to 16 links, and you're going to call it a day. And the reason why this makes sense and why it's easy is because what I also want you to do is Overlord 1 is going to go where it did. You're gonna, you should scout his ramp with it and then sit kind of how you are at his natural. Overlord 2 can do what it did. I, I kind of, like you scouted with it for proxies. Just leave it in front of your natural and then scout kind of how you are now, like up to his base. And then I would say the best thing to do would, would be then to scout into his base around four minutes like this overlord could have been here a little bit faster as well if you would have done that because your overlord kind of like took an awkward path to look for proxies and then went up here uh but anyways uh talking about the hellion defense so yep. overlord three four and five could be placed in front of your natural 
in front of one of the ramps at your third and in front of the other open area at your third. So you have every locate like three locations that he can attack you from are all covered by overlords. And then all you gotta do is spread your creep like you did between your natural and your third, and you always put your queens in position where you're gonna block his Hellions from running into your base. Because your queens can bounce between your natural and your third way faster than Hellions can bounce between the two bases if they're going on the outside. Because it's much further travel distance to do that repeatedly. Okay. Uh, can you just like uh, sum it up for me really fast if I just like, if I got it? Overlord one goes. I I think I got, just got really confused with the placings and uh, because the stream is moving in a really. Oh like, sure. Do you want me to say? I can say it again, but I can make it to where the stream will probably see it the way I'm saying it. No, okay, just say it. I just uh, just uh, like focus on check, what you're check, saying. Check check this. This is I I figured it out. I'm a 200 IQ move right here. I'm gonna ping the map right now, and you can see it on the stream where I want your three overlords to be that I'm talking about. Nice. So Overlord three, four, and five are gonna go to those three ping spots, in front of where your, uh, your, your in front of where he like the Hellions are always gonna have to go through here first to get into your base. So this top ping, he would go through the okay. ramp here to get to your base. This one yeah, down here. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And this way I you can always you can always put your queens in position. Th these are the queens you're constantly building, not your injectors, but always your creep spreaders. You because it, it doesn't have to be like. Eight queens in the doorway. You could have literally, if you have seven queens, you could have four queens in his in his face, and then if he dives past your queens, you could catch him with zerglings, and you're fine. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of ha the goal you want to go for here while you saturate three bases, because after you saturate three bases, then you could go back into making units. And if he keeps making units as himself, that's when you'll be able to match what he's doing and stuff like that, because you could be fully saturated on three bases by six minutes, easy. Super, super fast. Like even like 5:30, you could be fully saturated, uh, in a, a standard game playing like this. And 5:30 is almost here, right? We're only like uh, 75 seconds away from that, basically. So, if you think about how much stuff he's gonna do with his build in 75 seconds from now, it's not gonna be too crazy, because he's this dude also has a bit of a bank. He's not really. He's got a lot of gas. He's not doing the most efficient things himself either. Uh. But yeah, like that's gonna definitely make your life a wor like tons easier, because it's really easy to absorb Terran uh, Hellions that way. So yeah, that that's what I would uh, recommend yeah. instead of the Static D. Static D, all it's gonna do is slow you down. And if we look back yeah. at the drone count, this is the thing that's this is this is the one thing that I'm like, ah shit, dude, this is painful. Okay. Because okay. you're you're already you're down by one one drone already, and you're nothing's happened, really. Oh, oh, yeah, just, yeah, that, that's like a sensation about like, uh, it's better to lose those than lose for the upcoming Hellion Harass, I just like getting fucked up, so I, I might, I might as well fuck myself up <laughs> first. <laughs> sure, yeah, okay, I, I feel you, dude, I feel you, dude. <laughs> but, uh, uh, just imagine though, if you had overlords in front of your base like we talked about, you'd see this coming. So you don't have to get fucked up, you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Okay. Oh, I just saw I just saw the chat. Uh, uh, in my, I'm Brazilian. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. Uh, but yeah, like you have no lings as well, really. Like you have just the, the Reaper lings. So, I mean, you're putting a lot of emphasis on these spines, but even these spines can't be placed everywhere. To cover all your drones because like he could run to the left side of your natural kill drones he could run to the south side of your main and kill drones which is what he's doing so this is definitely gonna screw you really bad and uh the fact that this turns into a 21 minute game is brutal because this opener for you is already so hard to come back from because because remember how i said a second ago you could you could be you could be at ideal saturation by like 5 30 to six minutes Right now, you should have double the drone count that you do. Um, and you could even have also like 14 links that could have absorbed yeah. that. Yeah, I understand how I could do that. Yeah. That's, that's really... That's... And now the game is just gonna... You're playing from super far behind, which makes this game really, really hard. So I would yeah, say... I, that, that's really nice to notice because uh, actually I thought the mistakes uh, were like on 
the the majority of the mistakes were like in the mid game or going to the late game where I just like grinded my shit like in in the meat grinder sure and but uh, I'm really appreciating those uh, those tips because now I can see I didn't just like screw things in the mid game yeah because no. my uh, point of view goes like we've all done a lot of early games three one to three minutes like a lot of times but like 15 minute game 16 that that's i i really had like six games playing Zerg after the 15 minute mark and that leaves me completely uh, down well, the, the think about it like this too though this is like a concept that a lot of people don't think about when they're getting used to the game the weaker your early game is the harder your mid game will feel so if you feel like you're making a lot of mistakes in the mid game and the game feels harder than it should, it's because your early game is not giving you enough of like a cushion to like make it easier for you. Okay. So yeah, it's it's definitely gonna make it hard for you if you uh, if your if your early game is setting you behind. Yeah. So at this point too, uh, as I was saying before, like it'd be great if you sent an overlord into his base around four minutes. That's that's like the golden point in time. This is also against Protoss. If you don't know what Protoss is doing yet, or if you don't know what Terran is doing yet, if you just send an Overlord into their base, you start sending it in at four minutes. Most of the time, you'll get into their base in the majority of like the, the area of where you want to see shit by like 425, 430, because the Overlord is super slow. Uh, you'll see what kind of build they're kind of opting to go for. And if you see this here, where it's triple factory, you can kind of now gauge the situation and be like, all right, let's go into... Uh, like roaches, like roaches would, like, which is kind of what you're doing already. But all you gotta nice. do now is just have like eight roaches, ten roaches, and you'd be great. Okay, uh, I, I I can swear that Overlord was was like done to. I, I had that Overlord that way so he could scout, but I think I forgot. It. Sure, no, it's fine. It's it, it, like it's just something to remember though. Four minutes, perfect time to go. Yep, yep. Okay, four minutes. Right down. <laughs> and then uh, imagine too if you didn't have any static D. All these spines and like spores, I'm not gonna uh, criticize you on really that much because if you haven't actually been able to get a good scout off on his base yet and you don't know if there's a potential battle cruiser or banshee or something like that, it's never gonna be that bad to make like one spore per base just in case you're gonna get fucked over. That way, you know, you're just gonna minorly fuck yourself over, which is something you're already experienced at doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not yeah. majorly That's fuck yourself like over by. <laughs> yeah. Like, why well, you're not going to skip spores and be like, well, I should have made spores. Well, fuck. Ah, that sucks. So spores, I'm not really going to harp on you about. That's fine. But the spines, definitely <laughs> too much, dude. You don't need the spines. Okay. Uh, like, roaches would be so much better for you. Yeah. There could be a attack that, like, evolves the spines from the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and at this stage now, again, you've just lost... I mean... The spines aren't really doing like it sucks because you've made so many spines and you still lost 23 drones. So it's like, well, fuck, they're not really working. <laughs> like, I'm still yeah. losing drones everywhere. <laughs> so, so yeah, like they're not even doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> so, uh, and you're making another one. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, like that was 23 drones. I had no idea. So I mean, like if you had like and you know more spines. <laughs> yeah, like the early game. When he only has like four or six aliens, the early lings are more than enough with your queens. But then once you get to that point where you have three bases saturated, which you are should definitely be at now because we're at seven minutes here, um, you could then have gone into roaches right after, and the roaches would be shutting this down over and over and over. Is there a situation where I do need spines, uh, and then I? <laughs> I can tell. I can tell you when you need spines. The time to make spine crawlers is late game when your base count starts getting kind of a lot higher and you have more bases than you can optimally defend properly especially when you're ready to start moving out and attack so like right like again right now let's just say you made 20 roaches okay and you had three bases fully saturated one way you could defend that really easy is number one if your creep spread is really good you could see shit coming from a mile away another thing you could do that's really easy is you could just switch your roaches 50 50 between your third base and your natural so if you have 20 roaches you put 10 in your third 10 in front of your natural and you're safe from Hellion run bys all day. Yeah, I, I still don't get the, the creep spread like uh, when I, I'm cycle, cycling, right? 
when I'm going through my bases and I'm like injecting and checking yeah. my larva and doing stuff, uh, I like forget the the, the creep and uh, mostly when they like uh, when the Terran in this case he uh, cans and kills the the tumor that actually spreads. Yeah. And I was just, I was, I will go like just uh, okay you win I'm not going to do this anymore this is traumatic. Sure. So <laughs> the perfect answer for you. When, like here, this is what you should feel like. Okay, the better you are at creep spread, the better you should feel, because if you force scans out of Terran, you slow their economy down, but you do not slow your your own economy down because you're using creep mechanics to slow his economy down. So you should feel like you're winning the game every time you're like scan, 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 and you're like, wow, okay, he's scanning a lot to kill my creep because all I have to do to fix that is send some roaches forward to push him back after he kills my creep. And I save my creep with my creep queens after I push his hellions away. So even though my creep recedes a little bit, I save the majority of it and he just burned a scan for that. And if you do it repeatedly like that, you make him lose so many mules because he's so paranoid about the creeps are getting out of control. So that should feel super... Like every time you force a scan on your creep, if you can save it, that feels amazing for Zerg. That is a win-win situation for Zerg right there. Uh, okay. It only You should only feel bad about creep being uh, scanned when he scans it and fortifies it because then you it recedes and you can't stop it from receding like it, he's like sieged his tanks there or something and he's like setting up an army there because he's about to push you in that direction that is painful for zerg for sure uh but whenever the hellion open whenever the terran opens up with hellions that is never the case it's only the case when they open up with bio tank because if they open up with Hellions, it's always going to be a delay. If it does turn into Biotank, it's always going to be delayed Biotank. So Roaches could easily always retake your creep by pushing Hellions away. Every single time. Okay. Uh, so just always be in that mindset of saving it before it recedes and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, what about the Roach Warren timing? Was it late? Was it too early? Your Roach Warren should be thrown down when you're uh, around, around the same time when you make the Lings. Uh, I would say when you're about the time when your natural is like mostly saturated, like 12 plus drones under natural is when you should take a roach horn because you're not going to build roaches, uh, until you're already fully saturated on two bases. Like we're talking full saturation. Uh, like, okay, let me, let me say it like this. I, I don't want to make it confusing cause I, I'm, I feel like I'm about to, you can start the roach horn when your roach, when your, uh, when your natural mineral line has 12 plus drones. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, something like that. Just start it anywhere in there. And then you're not going to take your gases. Uh, you're not going to retake your gas in your main base with three drones on it until your natural mineral line has 16 drones on it. So two fully saturated mineral lines means you retake three drones in your gas in your main base. Then you are not going to take gases two and three until your, your third mineral line has eight to 12 drones on it. So we're talking like half a saturated mineral line pretty much okay and then once you saturate those gases that's about the same time when your roach horn will be done and that's when you can make roaches if you need to make roaches and this game is definitely a time when you should make roaches because he's going mech and also that roach horn would be also started around the time when your overlord would be sc uh, scouting into his base so because that would also be timing up well with your scout into his into his uh main base or like you should you should get a read on like what's going on basically you should have an idea with your overlord scouts at this point because you should have scouted like with your first overlord going into his ramp and then back to the cliff second overlord going in at four minutes all the way through his base yeah i'm i'm completely blind i think i just put down a hydrogen and a yeah no it's it, it, i i'm down just, just to do like a, an all-around tech like okay i don't know what i'm how I'm going to react, but I, I know I'll have the tools to do it. Yeah, no, I feel you. Uh, so, it's, yeah, like, the, the way you're playing it out, though, with, like, Roach Hydra, this is totally fine. I think for the league you're in right now with Zerg, you could do this all the time. It's not a big deal. As long as you just have something efficient, because right now you're, like, half the supply of Terran, so this is rough. This is super complicated for you to come out of this in an effective way. You have to do, like, I would say the only way you're really going to get uh, cost-efficient trades here when you're behind this much is if you have some type of AoE or control, like an investor or a lurker or something like that. And I would never recommend you to do those units if you're lower league 
I would say this game is kind of a wash at this point. And it's, it's like restart, try better for the early game macro position for yourself. That's going to be solid and go from there. Because this this game is you're so far behind. This is going to be so hard to come back from. Uh, okay. And I, I, like like I'll, we'll still talk about it. We don't have to quit the game or anything right now. But it's is uh, 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 I, I can spoil. I lose. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you're gonna lose. You're, you're like the only way you're gonna win this is if the Terran makes like a hundred mistakes now. I guess oh, it's so far behind. Don't, don't worry. There's still like lots of rooms. <laughs> like, you have like thirteen minutes yet. For, for like mistakes to be done. Sure. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how you play it out. <laughs> um, another thing to look at too is uh, don't bother getting a carapace against mech, okay? So I know you don't know it's mech. You don't know it's mech yet. You haven't actually scouted it. But if you do know it's mech, don't get carapace. Really? Uh, yeah, and the reason why is because mech hits... So the way I can describe this the best is is there's a term called breakpoints, and it means that it takes a certain number of something to do something. So, like, let, let, to describe it in detail, let's say it takes a siege tank two hits to kill a roach, okay? A siege tank will always take two hits to kill a roach if you have armor level one, two, or three. It does not matter. So, armor, all it does is it's really expensive on gas, and it's slowing down your unit production because your gas units are being delayed so heavily because of the Carapace upgrade. So your timings are all later, which allows your Terran opponent to have more mech stuff there. But the Carapace is not going to help you at all in that fight. Uh, it, but uh, the Thors, the, do they, like... Is Carapace... Uh, so, a Thor? Against Thors? No, it's not. It's not useful against Thors. It's not useful against Cycle. It, the, I'll say this. The only thing it is useful against, this is a much smaller list. The only thing Carapace is useful against is a Hellion. And the Hellion oh. is irrelevant because... And we're talking about ground-based Thor. Or, or Sorry, ground-based mech. We're not talking about air. Because okay, okay. uh, okay. that's what he's doing, right? Uh, the only the, and the, the reason why a Hellion is irrelevant is because a Hellion is like the weakest unit that you... When you look at a Terran mech army and you're like, oh, he's got Hellions. You're like, that is not intimidating at all. Like, I'll just kite that. I'll AoE that. I'll just smack that off the map in two seconds and it doesn't matter. Hellions are not intimidating at all. They All they do is just buy time to absorb damage for the other mech units that are scary to do damage. But like a Widowmine and a Cyclone pierce 100% of your armor. Armor has no effect against them. Thors and tanks hit way too hard for armor to make a difference. Each time a Thor shoots... Or go ahead. I think he, he gave up on tanks and like pure Thor uh, sure that, that's relevant yeah. well check this out armor it's so in Starcraft 2 armor and weapon upgrades or like armor compared to weapons it's always a flat number it's like if the unit does 10 damage and it's attacking unit that has one armor it means it does 9 damage it just does literally 10 minus 1 you do damage yeah, minus okay, armor I got, I, I got the, the upgrade theory okay okay but like now a Thor it does 39 damage times 2 every time it attacks, and it attacks every 0.91 seconds. So a Thor is actually doing 78 damage per shot. And 78 damage per shot is more than enough to one-shot a Baneling, a Zergling. It will two-shot a, uh, a Roach and a Hydra. Always. Actually, hold on. It would actually three-shot a Roach if you had good armor upgrades. But don't get it. It's not worth it. <laughs> Still not worth it. Don't do it, dude. Yeah, I... Okay. <laughs> I, <see it. laughs> I like how uh, agreeable you are right now. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm just like... Uh, uh, the problem is with uh, seeing a replay and knowing what's going to happen is sure. that like... Uh, yeah, I, I know exactly how I got like... Crewed up. Yeah, sure. Over. I don't know how you phrase this. But... Uh, uh, the the and, and I thought the problem was like bad engagement. Okay. Bad, because it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's always going to be a bad engagement too, because your supply is just so low. So th here's the thing too. Here's just here's just a rule for Zerg, right? If you're going roaches, you should always be at a supply number that is like we're talking like thirty to like forty percent higher than the Terran, or something like that, or like possibly even Not more. Like, 
For instance, if you're if he's at 141 supply, you should easily be maxed out right now. If he's at like 100 supply, you should be like at 160, like 150, 160. You should always be having this like massive lead because if you don't, you're going to struggle so hard because the thing about roaches is they scale horribly if your opponent gets higher and higher and higher in supply. They're really good at overpowering because they overwhelm, but they're really bad at taking a straight up fight versus something that is either bigger than they are or equal numbers. Roaches then just drop off a cliff and how bad they are. They are very cost inefficient units the higher supply your opponent gets because your opponent, like the equivalent of, him, of you going maxed out on roaches would be like him maxing out on hellions. Like it's just a unit that kind of sucks late game. Like it's, it's, it still has place and purpose, but it's not actually the power unit. So if your opponent has a bunch of Thor, uh, Thors and tanks and you have a bunch of roaches, it would be like the same thing as if you had a bunch of lurkers and like infestors or something like that versus a bunch of hellions. Like, it's just not going to go good for the guy who's massing the weak unit. But the thing is, is the weak unit can be massed really fast. So it becomes strong in number. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, comp yeah, I mean okay. composition wise, uh, uh, I just saw the tanks and Thors. And sure. I think and maybe he's mathing those stuff. Well, but like. I, I don't, go I, ahead. I didn't know he was going like, do like Thor heavy. I was th thinking more about the tanks, and I think I I, I made some infestors like. It's. I, I think it's okay what you made. It's just that how late it is that you're making it is the problem. No, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's just like the result of this. To the, this exactly. Whole yep. Nine minute process. I'm, that's yeah. clear to me. Because again, uh, the example build I just did the other day was I maxed out at 8:30 doing Roach Hydra. And on the, the pace you're at on this game, you're probably going to max out at like 13 or 14 minutes. So it's just like this massive delay for you, unfortunately. And then at this point now, it's, it's just the best way to... If I were at you right now, if I just sat down and I was like, okay, this is the game I'm in. This is what I have to play. The way I would say would be the most efficient way to use what you have and go from there would be the first thing I would do, if you know you're up against mech and it starts turning into a late game situation, I would make a spire. First things first, I would make a spire. Next thing I would do is I would turn that spire into a greater spire. And then I would also, while I'm taking the spire, I would also expand more. Like you definitely need more than three bases. Um, your economy is very weak right now. So I would, I would, what I would do is I would kind of try to keep him defensive while droning more so you don't have to necessarily take a fight but just kind of like be around like be active on the map like just kind of walk over there a little bit and be like hey i'm here but i'm not like don't throw it away just make him feel defensive uh by you being in the presence of that area and then if you take another base you expand you go to aspire you could turn this game into a situation where you could go into like broodlord corruptor and because you already have it also viper like, the fact that you're going Vipers and Infestors is insane. This is such a... Like, Masters League players can't even handle that. I'm not even kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, that, no, I, I, just, I just had, like, a great game with Vipers, and I'm like, I'm gonna do that again, and did <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, the, it's definitely gonna be super I think hard for what you. Happens, sorry. I think what happens, like, mostly, like, looking at this game now, is that after I got, like, really poked hard in the... In game i get really like oh my god i'm never going to to be able to sustain that like 80 drone stuff he'll keep attacking so i gotta do something else and then i i just forgot about the economy yeah to be honest i would rather for the time it takes you to learn how to do this properly i would rather you lose a game by being like oh i made too many drones and i'm dead than being the guy who's over paranoid and makes way too many units and finds yourself in a situation where you're like i'm not getting attacked but now i have a bunch of units what do i want to do because it's like a double negative if you're the guy who makes units and then you have to do something with them because your opponent's not attacking before you make good drone counts. Uh, which is way harder because now that's so much attention you have to put into your units, which is going to furthermore delay your macro. Because now okay. you're you're di you're dividing your attention in more ways than you need to. Um, you would actually, I would say you would win more, like if we played the odds here, you would win more of your games if you just made drones blindly. If you fucked something up. Uh... And then I'm not saying you always do that. Eventually, you're going to want to learn how to like scout always properly, know what's going on. But for now, droning blindly would be better. 
Uh, if you oh, if okay. you ever make a mistake. Yeah, I think I need to do gear now. Yeah, because there's no like if you drone blindly, there it will there would still be a good wind condition in this game for you. But at the, as it stands right now with what you have, it looks bleak. Like, if you're gonna win this game, it looks so bad. Uh, <laughs> like I just watch you walking across the map and just getting murdered. That's what I see happening. Or yeah, just that's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, what, but, that's pretty but much what happened. Like, <laughs> like ten minutes. He, if he just would like go across the map, and this game would be over already. But sure. He, he doesn't know that though, right? He's playing safe as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he likes to see me bleeding. Also, he's doing the bronze GM build. It looks like the build that I did in the series, because he opened up with a few tanks and his depot wall off, and now he's just going mass Thor Hellbat. This is legit. Yeah. Like beta GM build. Um, so... I, what have you done? You've made my letter really uh, hard. I'm sorry, man. You should do the BDGM Zerg style. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've, I haven't tried it yet because <laughs> I didn't... I, I, I wasn't uh, sure if I could handle Zerg. Sure. I, well, I watched the proto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me. Well, if, if this guy... I'll just say this. If this guy goes mass Hellbat Thor, one thing you could do, just to make your life really easy, okay? If you know it's Mass Hellbat Thor, uh, you could actually just make a lot of bases, a lot of like, have queens injecting them. So we're talking like just make sure you have like 80 drones, have a good injection rolling on your hatcheries, and just go honestly for like 10 Ravagers and Mass Roaches. And every time you fight him, just throw Biles all over his Thors. And then make that army again and again and again and again. And just repeatedly make that army as long as he still makes Hellbat Thor. And you will have decent trades. Like, good, good, decent to good trades. You could also go Roach Hydra. It's not going to trade as effectively, but it's still going to be really good as long as you macro. Because the the beautiful thing about Zerg is, and no matter how good this Terran is, if he goes for Hellbat Thor, the, the pacing of how slow factories can rebuild that army is not as fast as Zerg can rebuild the Zerg army. And also, if you, if you actually prioritize the limited creep spread, you would have high mobility. Zerg could control the game a little bit better than Terran can if the, you know, if you're able to handle that. Like if both players were the same exact skill level, I think the Zerg would probably win with the B to GM styles. Uh, did, did you see the, the the creep spread? Like he cut the creep in the middle, and then I just gave up on that and continued spreading, and, and I'm just sure. following that. Well, look well, at your look at your queens in front of your uh, third base. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're just sitting there. Completely awful. Go fix yeah. it. Go fix it. You gotta repair it every once in a while. And, and, you're like, and, uh, and, uh, it's, it'd be like, you know, like you start a fire in your house and you're like, you know what, fuck it. And, Let the house and burn my down. units are there. Like they, they have a reason to, oh, here's creep, you're safe. And so let's go there. And, and just so they hand them as creep in the map. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the purpose of the, of the creep queens is they defend you early versus like hellions. And then they just become creep fixers. You just keep making creep all day. Um, and you're, and then every time you take another base, you can take one of these queens away from creep and put it on injection on a new hatchery. So then you could actually have like five or six queens injecting, which would be insane. Tons of larva. <clears throat> but yeah, what's happening now with double spellcaster, low supply Roach Hydra Ravager? Or uh, sorry, Roach Hydra Zergling. You're actually getting a lot done, surprisingly, but... What kind of happened just now is kind of what I expected to happen, where your army just gets murdered. Uh, pretty hard. Like, you killed the planetary, but... The Terran no, also... I, I, don't, I, oh, I killed the planetary. I don't think it's the Terran nice repaired it. I think he was just mining and was like, ah, fuck it. It's <laughs> <coughs> a game. But... Yeah, it's the big problem for you is, even though you just... You did... You did just kill 24 SCVs. That was great. That was good shit. That was a nice run by. But you're still down by 22 SCVs. Or by 22 drones, rather. Like, you're so far behind in economy. And then on top of that, Terran has mules, so it's even worse. Because he's got four orbital commands that can drop mules all day. And that's... Each time a mule gets dropped is literally worth the equivalent of, like, five drones or some shit. It's insane. Wow. So, you're really... You're, it says you're behind by 22 workers, but in reality, you're behind by, like, 42. Because of the four yeah. orbital commands he has. And, uh, and, and, like, after a, a, a horrible offensive, I decided, well, it's time to expand, and that should have been 
This should have just been earlier. Every, everything that's happening for you should have just been a little bit earlier throughout the game. And a lot of it would have come down to if your first scout actually paid attention to the fact that you're going up against multiple factories. I think I sh also have... So I got tanked. But like, right now you see... You, you, you can see how... Like, it's pretty decent how well Hydra Roach can engage Thors. Like, it's not bad. Like, Thor, you're, you're going to definitely lose a lot of units too. You're going to trade pretty heavily. But you can definitely... Are they upgraded? Yeah. Are they, are his Thors are two three. Your the, your uh, your Hydras and Roaches are three three. His Thors are two three. So you guys have pretty much similar upgrades. He just doesn't have a level three armor. Uh, Mech should always be three three, and you should always be I would say three zero. Uh, for both Zerglings and Roaches, like three weapon on both of them. That way, I, but again, I don't recommend you go Zerglings for now. I think actually, I what I think would be best for you is if you actually. Um, I mean, if you really want to, you can totally do speed leg openers. But I think if you just kind of took a moment to look at the Bronze to GM guide of, like, how to do Roach openers, you'd probably have so much more success with the way you play. Uh, Lings are a little bit more active uh, required, and I think it's something you probably could handle pretty soon. Um, but for now... Uh, this, uh, it, it just helps me to notice, like... Uh how those like early aggressions, the the Reaper falls by the 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 how do you call the Hellions, and they are they just like put me in a situation where I forgot forget to to macro properly. Like yeah. in unbothered games, I just it's really fun to, to like <clears throat> drone all the way up and and it's doing fine. But that's why I just honestly got out of balance. What you're looking for, like so, I think you could handle Zergling builds. Uh, once you get a little bit more comfortable with Zerg as a whole. <coughs> but what you're looking for with, uh, you know, uninterrupted droning. Literally, that is exactly what B2GM is. It is un uninterrupted droning, and it gives you a healthy defensive position that you can go into Roach Hydra with, with a great economy. And it just you just remax Roach Hydra. Roach Hydra. Roach Hydra. Uh, and you just continue to push over and over and over. And once you get that down and you start getting more comfortable with cr things like creep spread and jex, then adding in another element of like speedlings would be way easier than trying to do all of it at once. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I definitely... And the, this, and the spellcasters didn't help actually. Yeah, so I would say don't even bother with the spellcasters until you're like honestly... Yeah, yeah. Like diamond, high diamond or like masters even. Like that's kind of advanced for Zerg because it requires timing elements to your micro then, which is a lot harder. So yeah, like right now, he's got 200 supply basically, and you're not even at 100. Yeah. Uh, at I was least... like, okay, I just fought an army, maybe he doesn't, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm thinking too. I wouldn't even know where to go, because you're fucking pretty dead right now. If he pushes. Um, the early game okay. definitely had the, 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 all the early game stuff puts you into this point. Yep. Uh, it's not like, oh, this camp is really... I was like, okay, Thors are really good units. I should have. He, he actually Let's waited. Go. So the thing is, is you yeah. had you had like one hallway of creep, and he actually waited long enough to keep scanning and killing it, and scanning your base. He's very paranoid, so he's allowed you to max again. But again, this fight is it's not about. Here's the big thing: the big the big golden rule of Zerg. Okay, it's not about your first fight. It's about every fight after the first fight. If you're playing a style like Roach Hydra. So you should expect to lose this fight with your first fight. You should always think that. Because Roach Hydra scales like shit. But you can remake it really fast. So you should you should just think about your first fight as like... You're going to whittle it down a bit, but you're going to lose the fight. And then he's going to... If he keeps pushing, you're going to have a remaxed army that now... His supply has dipped by like 40 or 50. And now the second time you fight him, you're going to crush his ass. Because now there's not enough Terran there. And then, you know, if vice versa, if, let's say he goes back and plays defensive, and now when you you have to walk across the map, so instead of him being down by 40 supply, he's only down by 25. Because he, more units are, it's more time that has been allowed for him to have more units pop into the fight, because you have to cross the map instead of, instead of him crossing the map. It's not going to be as good for you, but you might lose the fight again, but maybe instead of killing 40 supply, you oh, kill 60 supply. Yeah. Because the more you lower his supply and remax and lower his supply and you remax, 
the more you can keep continuously running him over harder and harder and harder. <clears throat> so again, it's not about the first max, it's about the remax repeatedly. And that's how Roach Hydra wins. And any advice on running into planetaries? I mean, we got Ravagers and Banelings. Are those the easier? <coughs> I would say <coughs> try to um, avoid fighting planetaries and his army at the same time. Like, if he's going to guard his planetary, maybe just, like, run opposite and go to, like, his natural. And just, like, run into his natural, kill his natural orbital, run into the main. Even if you, again, expect to lose your army, but do as much damage to him in the process as you can. But if you fight a planetary plus, like, a bunch of tanks or Thors or some shit, you're going to probably take a really bad trade there. So that's not going to be ideal. If you, can, if you could actually pull him back all the way to his main base, lose your army, but remax immediately, and then, you, and then when you remax immediately, uh, and he's still killing your army in, in his main base, because you're making it as it dies, the new units that just got made could run to a defenseless planetary that only is the planetary, and you could run it over way more cost efficiently. That is one way you could break a planetary, easy peasy, that I guarantee it would work for you in your games that you're going to play. Because one thing about players around Platinum level is they don't split their armies. Or like in, anywhere in the Plat range, it's very rare to see them split armies for multiple multi-prong aggression. It's usually a blob going everywhere. Yeah, the the Ling uh, run by actually made the Thors go all exactly. the way to that base and, and just yeah, lost the plan. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, uh, yeah, but the game is way more complicated for you than it needs to be. Like, you don't need investors, even though I think they're really good with their own parasite against Thors. You don't need them right now because all it's going to do is I guarantee it's going to make your remax really weak because it's an added element of like uh, skill cap that you don't need to be there. And the more elements you add to your gameplay that are harder to do, the more time you're uh, distracting yourself from doing important things, just like making larva and having it there. To remax with sure sure because like if we go to units tab right now that makes perfect sense you have eight larva on four bases and i know you're not maxed yet you just spent a lot of it on maxing but you're about to fight him and you only have an eight larva bank to work with so far which is very scary because that's not a remax okay now you have 16 that's getting a little bit better but even 16 is not great the, the amount of larva we're talking about that would be great for you to have when you take a big fight like this, would be like 40, 45, something like that. Like that would be, that would be like, okay, remaxed. And then you make that again and you're still injecting while you make it. And then as soon as that next army goes across the map and dies, 40, remaxed again. Like you just keep maxing over and over and over. <clears throat> that fight went really well for you because he didn't do anything about your neural parasite. And again, like, sure, that's, it's nice to, to, it, it feels good because you're like, oh, I just microed that knife. I destroyed that army. That feels great. But look at what you macroed during that. You macroed nothing. So yep, uh, not a single inject. <laughs> that's it's again. It's just you would you would still you could still win this fight anyways. E either way, if you just macroed better, uh, and you would have more time allowed to macro if you don't have to do things like micro vipers and infestors and roach hydra all at the same time. Because that is a very awkward, complicated army to micro. And if your opponent scans and he like finds the infestors, that whole plan falls apart immediately because you're like, oh shit, all my infestors just died. Well, um, uh oh, that sucks. And now I don't have larva to fall back on, and now I have no backup plan. It could, and it again, could... the, the, the same uh, thought process of okay, I just fought an army. Well, grind road traffic during two planetary. That this time I couldn't. You would have broke it if you sent it all to one base. You set your army to three different locations. If you all, if your whole army would have gone to either one of his planetaries, you would have killed either one of those bases. For sure. And then here's a way you can, here's a way you could micro it too. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about what, like the one planetary that was getting attacked. A perfect way you could micro this would be you could a move the planetary, and then what you could do is you could double click or like control click or whatever the roaches only. And you could move command into his mineral line and then A-move the ground. Move command into his mineral line, A-move the ground. The reason why this is important is because when SCVs are mining minerals, they are considered neutral. So you're, all your units will attack a planetary. But as soon as he starts repairing, an SCV is now flagged as a hostile unit. But the AI of your roaches and hydras will not attack the SCVs because they're currently attacking a planetary. 
So if you continuously move command and attack the ground with your roaches to get closer and closer to his SCVs, your roaches will then go, let's attack the closest hostile thing, which is now his repairing SCVs. So you indirectly could kill a bunch of SCVs all at the same time with a bunch of roaches that are concaved around his SCVs like this. Oh, I see. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you could, again, your roaches would be moving forward and attacking, moving forward and attacking. Your hydras would just be concaving down the planetary. The planetary is going to keep killing roaches as well because it's closer to it. Because that's just how it works. That's how AI works in this game. It always kills the closest hostile thing to it. Uh, so you could, you, if you know, if you killed like half or like two thirds of his SCVs, guaranteed it would die. But even if you didn't even focus fire SCVs, the sheer amount of Roach Hydra you have, you could actually out DPS the repairing of these SCVs, for sure. You have so much DPS, you could just like two shot a planetary if you put everything on it, because you have twenty six Roaches and thirty eight Hydras. That is so much fucking damage. <clears throat> but it's yeah, scattered the, everywhere. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the, the the supply and the uh, supply and the I just lost it. Oh, the the I was nearly maxed, but the economy isn't there, so yeah, could, exactly. Uh, couldn't bring it back like a yep. more so. And that goes, the, that goes with the concept we were talking about, where it's not about your first max, it's about your remaxes, right? So you have to be so able to have really, enough to remax again and again and again. It's really weaker than the, the last one. Yeah. This army. Yep. And the fact that he's maxed again now and you're not, it just is the sheer fact of... Uh, that's the because you threw an army away cost inefficiently right there. Like, you lost so many units, which you didn't punch a hole in anything of him, really. You just lost a bunch of units kind of on... on a, uh, in, in, like inefficiently, and then now it's just really hard for you to bounce back from this because, again, you're down by so much economy the whole time. <clears throat> See, like, well, now, if, if you kill this planetary, if, all you gotta do is move forward one more time, and you guaranteed kill this planetary. Like, this many roaches and hydras can totally, even this many can kill it. A second ago, you had, like, 18 roaches and 36 hydras. Now you have 18 roaches and 17 hydras. You can still kill a planetary super fast with this. Because he doesn't even have building armor either. Look at that, you just popped it super quick. Uh, so if you just didn't scatter your army right there a second ago, you would have done a lot better than trying to be fancy and going for his natural and his third and his fifth at the same time. Yes. <laughs> a good rule of thumb is just remax, remax, remax. Always kill his newest expansion. Remax, remax, remax. Always kill his newest expansion. Literally repeat those two things, and you'll win a lot of your games. You don't have yeah. to split your army up. It's it's that's that shit. That's like that's that's those are things that are very advanced. And right now you're you're not losing games because you're not microing efficiently enough. You're losing games because your macro is just not there. So the more micro elements you add to your play, the more your macro will suffer because you're distracting yourself way harder. And then I, seeing that, I would. They just okay. Let's die to a planetary again. I guess. I haven't done that nearly like, enough times. I, I like your takeaway. <laughs> hey, die to a planetary again. <coughs> Good job. She's taking planetary. Yeah, that was a nice comment there. <laughs> All right. Anyways, yo. Uh, well, and now I and, and the last one I brought the infestor so I could uh, do nothing. Yeah, that's it, like it's again it's complicated. You're making the game more complicated than it has to be. It's t difficult to micro multiple spellcasters and roach hydra at the same time because you also need to be spreading creep at the same time and also injecting your bases at the same time and also maintaining your mineral lines properly and making sure you're not like having 16 drones on three patches. You need to be constantly updating your base repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And the more attention you have to put in your army to properly take a fight, and the more supply you invest into spellcasters, the more of an emphasis it has for them to do something. Because your actual brute force army, like your Roach Hydra, is smaller now. So you have to be able to understand how to hit timing properly. And it needs to be good, otherwise it's not going to pay for itself. It's just going to make your Roach Hydra weaker because it's less supply of it. Like, uh... your timing in bottom middle was great. But your timing in top middle was horrible. Uh, so you can see, like, oh, okay, my army just falls apart and it dies. Like, it, uh, <laughs> you know, it didn't really do much. But 
in bottom middle when you neural parasited him and you and you blinding clouded him and you won that fight convincingly, like that was good. But again, like that problem was you invested so much time into that that you didn't give yourself the macro element that you really need. That is the more important part of it. Because again, it's not about killing one army. It's about repeatedly smashing him until the game is over. Yeah, uh, I got it. The... Can I put that? The that that should come naturally after I. I... Yeah, like consistently and, and yeah, the doing that. The micro at the micro aspects will definitely come once you have mastered the macro elements, for sure. Like it's just it's just natural. Because once, what, like the better you get at the macro element, the faster you'll become at it, and the more time that gets freed up again and again and again for other things. And those other things are then when you add in micro. But if you just sacrifice macro when you haven't gotten it mastered and gotten it down yet, and then you micro as well, while you neglect macro, that's where you fall apart. That's where everybody falls yeah. apart. I, I I see it. Well, thank you so much, Vibe. I wanna. Uh... So shout out to Wally again for giving me this opportunity. It was really, really good. And yeah, man. I've learned, I've learned a lot, really, seriously. Yeah, shout and, out to Wally. Uh, yeah, shout out to Wally. Actually, this guy is amazing. <laughs> All right, so, man. Well, um, I'm leaving then, and now I'm trying to <laughs> to uh, put everything together so I can not uh, grow up with. Infestors and vipers. What was I think? That's all good, man. The, well, the... are ravagers microbial? Uh, yeah, but okay. I, again, I I would say Roach Hydra is what you probably should focus on for now. But if you really want to, you can try going ravagers, and it's really easy because you just spam it all over his stores, and that's it. Okay, that that's not that intensive. Yeah, like you look, but again, when you if you did do that, you could spam it on his stores, and then go back to your base, inject, 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 inject. And then go back to your army. Don't just stare at your army the whole time. That's what you should be doing. If you just stare yes. at your army every time, that is incorrect. Unless you've already set up all of your macro right before the fight started. So you should also you should time your fights as Zerg right after macro cycles. So if you're if you're the one going, I'm gonna attack him. Do not attack him if you haven't injected your hatcheries in the last 40 seconds or something like that. Inject your shit first and then attack him because you get to choose when it happens because you're attacking him So always macro cycle priority first and then attack Yeah, that that, that well, that's Really good advice. I've been Like it's really nice to notice that I've actually Went through a similar process, but with Protoss, which is my Yeah, and it's like I have I have uh, I, I, it didn't roll over to Zerg. I'm needing to learn everything again. For sure. That's how it goes. It's just because it's awkward because you're learning a whole different style of play with a different race. And like, for yeah, instance, like if, really... if you're not if you're not used to creep, it's just awkward. You're like, uh, okay, creep. I, I, I can easily like uh, leave a, a Protoss army behind and go macro uh, like, and, and I trust uh, their power, but I, I can't do that with Zerg. I think they're too much. Sure. Zerg is, yeah, but, but again, it's all about that Remax, man. Yeah. Hive yeah, Tech Zerg, it. Hive Tech Zerg can um, fight for real, but anything below that, it's usually Remax, Remax, Remax. So, I um, don't want to take much of your time. I'm it's all good. This thingy Dude. here, and I shout out to Wally once more, and I appreciate your effort, and thank you again. Yo, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for coaching lesson. Have a great rest of your night, man. Thank you. And don't forget, don't build spines. <laughs> I think he's gone already. <coughs> Alright. Guys, thank you for watching another coaching lesson. This has been me and Kanatur. Kanatur. Uh, brought to you by Wally. Wally the robot. A nice guy. He actually paid for this coaching lesson. So, Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, just know I have many, many more like this on my channel. You can check out all of them, everywhere, anywhere, Bronze GM Style 2, the thing we referenced in this game a few times. Uh, it's definitely like a guide to help you get better at StarCraft if that's what your goal is. But thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take it easy. Peace, guys. Goodbye.